It's the unboxing at the Henson Company. I'm Joe. I'm Ryan. I'm Dave. That doesn't rhyme. We have Karen Fox, so we can't go wrong. The Jim Henson Company with ToughPigs.com. Unboxing! <laughs> Hey everybody, we're from Muppet fan site, toughpigs.com. We are here at the Jim Henson Company offices. The Henson Archives have set up some boxes. We don't know what's inside, could be anything. We're gonna open them up, we're gonna find out and hopefully see some cool Henson relics. So let's check out what's in those boxes. We're ready to do an unboxing here at the Jim Henson Company. And Karen, you got another box for I us? I do, I have another box. More boxes. We got plenty, no shortage of boxes in the archives. <laughs> That's good, we love boxes. Um, here, you take the top off. Oh, all right. Let's see Joe what gets we got to take there. the top off. Don't be lewd, uh, Ryan. <laughs> I wasn't being lewd. You're, you're being lewd. This is a red binder. Yeah. And you can read the label. Jim Henson notebooks, 1966 to 67, and membership cards. Huh. Wow. For all those memberships that he had. So, ready? Yeah. Okay. It's an old iPhone. Well, That's what it looks it like. It is just <laughs> like an old iPhone. In the in sense of, of the context, this is Jim's address book. Oh my! <laughs> wow. So there's also. Wow. Oh, now we can see Dave Lazer. I just How saw about the George name and Lucas? Phone number of John Landis. George Lucas, right there. Cheryl McFadden. That's Gates McFadden from uh, uh, from Star Trek. That's right. There's a lot of great people on this particular page. Wow. And you get a sense for the array of people that Jim uh, dealt with over the years. We have um, Marvel. Yeah, Marvel were Comics. Making, you know, yeah. Muppet Babies and what have you. Elaine May, mm -hmm. who wow. um, helped work on the script for Labyrinth. Uh, Ron Muick, who of course is a wonderful sculptor who mm -hmm. worked on various projects in the early 80s with Jim. These are all people that were important to Jim. Because that's an old one, but I think this one is even older. We'll see, let's see what this one is. Yes. Oh look at that, Return to Jim Henson, it has his address. Can you imagine finding that on the streets <laughs> of New York and be like, mm, you have a real moral decision to make yeah. at that point. Or you could call him up and say, I have your address book. How much is it worth? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want three piggies and two. Um, <laughs> but you see, his address was 227 East 67th Street, and then he's crossed out, and he's got 117 East 69th Street. I don't know if you can see that, but he's amended it. I can tell this one is from the early 70s because the first person in it is Manny Eisenberg, who's a big Broadway producer. But um, Manny and Jim had a deal. They were going to do a Broadway-type show at Lincoln Center. Here are the people in Bedford that could repair his Jaguar. <laughs> Jim liked cars. So, um, so wow. that's really that's fun. Important. I actually have one of those people, too, for my Jaguar in Bedford. But you don't have a car. You just have an actual Jaguar, the animal. Yeah, it's a vet, actually. Right. Yeah. So we have more address books, but what I really like are these little notebooks. And um, there's a whole bunch of them. And Jim was really great about record keeping. So he dated the notebooks. You know, he carried them around in his pocket to make notes on. Some of these um, look like they were written in a hurry, and others were just kind of, it, it's amazing. You can really see how his life is kind of flashing by at some point. And, um, and then he would transfer this information either into his red book, onto his calendar, or into his address books. Um, it's so great that like even though he copied all this stuff down somewhere else, like he still kept the originals. Yeah, yeah again, you have to be incredible. amazed that he kept everything. Yeah, it's, it's really sort of amazing that we have these. And see this one, on the last page you can see, um, that is Nutty Bird oh, yeah. from the... Um, RC Cola? RC Cola commercials. So, nice. um, and of course this is long before there were other big birds. Sure. Uh, and then, there's some things that would have been in Jim's wallet. So... Oh, Puppeteers of America. So oh, that's James. James. But that's yeah. for James. Puppeteers card. Well, they probably were all piled in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, but this is Jim's health insurance card. Um, of course, Jim and Jane were very involved in Puppeteers of America and UNIMA, which is the Union Internationale de la Marionette, which was hmm. the, the international um, puppetry organization, and Jim was instrumental in bringing uh, an American chapter to the United States. Um, so these are, these are his wow. membership cards. Well, his SAG card there? Yeah, we have a lot of his union cards because, of course, Jim was a member of the Writers Guild, mm -hmm. the Screen Actors Guild, mm -hmm. the American Federation of Television. Is that Jim's actual signature? Yes. On, on many of these cards, they have 
Jim's signature, but this is um, this is a member of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. So that's the daytime or local Emmy people, mm -hmm. and of course Jim won lots of Emmys, yeah. um, particularly from Sesame Street, which is the daytime Emmy people. Um, um, but this is a really fun pile of stuff here, mostly the top card. But these are just some business cards that were in Jim's wallet. And you can see who this one is. Dick Smith. Dick Smith. Now, Dick Smith was the world-renowned makeup artist, prosthetic artist, who died last year. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a lot of his stuff over at the Museum of the Moving Image, mm. his, his molds. He did the super old-age makeup for Dustin Hoffman and he, uh, Little Big Man. He did, and wow, he did well done, um, Linda Blair, you know, ah, in... Uh, wow. Um, the Exorcist. The Exorcist, thank you. Bonnie Erickson tells a story about how she and Jim went to his home up in Larchmont, and the Linda Blair head was in the center of his dining room. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, if you have a Linda Blair head, that's exactly where you keep it. Right. So, well, yeah. but Dick Smith really was the father of um, much of the sort of modern prosthetic makeup techniques that we use today. And Jim was really interested in it um, in terms of the uh, um, latex and foam use. And actually, they went to see him when they were doing. Muppet Musicians of Bremen, because you know mm -hmm. they have those characters that are kind of big masks, and he was thinking maybe they would do them with makeup, but they didn't end up doing it that way. Um, but what I really like is that this is Dick Smith's card, and on the back, Dick Smith wrote contact information for Jim to huh. meet Stuart Freeborn. Of course, Stuart Freeborn is the guy who made Yoda. Yeah. Wow. And so you see this um, artistic link yeah. Between um, Dick Smith and Stuart Freeborn. And it's something as a historian that I like, because something like this is very telling, even though it doesn't seem like much, you know, you say, oh, it's a business card, but mm -hmm. it really it really has a lot of history to it. Yeah, and absolutely. It talks and about relationships. Right, just to think about all these uh, incredibly creative people. Uh, That's so cool. I feel like it's interesting because we've seen so many great things from, from Jim's work and, uh, you know, the things that he's really touched and, and uh, created, but. This is something that it's just stuff from Jim's pockets. Yeah, it's Jim, very personal. the guy. Yeah, like Jim. Jim was a human being, just yeah. like the rest of us, who just had stuff. Yeah. You know. Um, and then finally, we have his driver's license back here. You know, Jim. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. That Jim. looks like a prop that you would buy, like at a like a gift shop. Yeah. Well, like, in Times Square, fake, right? The fake Jim Henson license. His Connecticut license. But this license. is the real one. And I want to know who his. Uh, who worked at the DMV at the time because that's a great photo. It really <laughs> My is. My driver's license photo doesn't look anything like that. Well, you don't have a beard. That's the difference. That's the whole problem. Yep. Let's yep. all grow so, beards and then the next no, not day. Not me. <laughs> Sorry, well, right. thank you again for sharing this with yeah, us. Yeah, this is fascinating. It's a real treat, just like just like everything else we're seeing in this series. Uh, so again, for more, check out Henson.com. And yeah. make sure you check us out at ToughPigs.com. Yeah. That's right. It's good stuff. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you.